Welcome to this lesson on the AstraSIP Terminal's User Training and Features. In this lesson, we'll cover the following topics. We'll explore the menu options. We'll go into the Preferences menu and look at a variety of submenus. I'll also talk about the Password, Status, and Lock menus. Then I'll demonstrate the following features. How to activate the speakerphone, the mute and hold buttons, and what they look like on the LCD screen. I'll transfer a call make a conference call, I'll access the callers list, I'll demonstrate call forward, do not disturb, and I'll access an XML application. In this lesson, I'll use the 6757i to demonstrate the features and functionality of the keys. I'll press the options key to open the options menu, and I'll use the arrow keys and soft keys to navigate, display, and modify the menus. I see a list of options. I can use the up and down arrow keys to highlight a menu. Notice the highlight pointer. Once I've highlighted a menu, I'll press the select button to enter that menu. The first option in the list is call forward. Selecting this option would take me to a menu where I could forward my phone to another number. However, on my system, my system administrator has programmed a soft key to perform this function. I'll demonstrate this feature a little later in the lesson. The next option is Preferences. I'll arrow down, notice that the Preferences option is highlighted, then I'll press the Select button. I'm given a list of submenus. The first one I'll look at is Tones. I'm given two more choices, Ringtones or Tone Set. We'll look at Ringtones first. I'll use the up and down arrow keys to cycle through the different ringtones that are available. When I've selected the ringtone I want to use, I'll press the Done soft key. This takes me back to my last menu. I'm not going to go through every menu, but I do want you to see the procedures of highlighting a menu with the arrow keys and then pressing the Select button to go into that menu. And as you're in these submenus, you can press Cancel to back out or Done to accept that option. Now I'll select the Display menu. Then I'll select Contrast Levels. In this menu, I'll use the left and right arrow keys to adjust the contrast. And I'll press the Done Soft key when I'm finished. I'll highlight and select Backlight. Backlight is the lighting in the LCD display. Your choices are Turn the Backlight Off or Auto. While you're in the Auto mode, you can press the Advanced Soft key this allows you to set a timer for how long the backlight stays on. The default is 10 minutes. I'll press the Done Soft key three times to return back to the Preferences menu. Using the Speed Dial Edit menu, you can program in Speed Dial numbers. Speed Dial numbers can also be programmed by using the web user interface. If you turn the Live Dial Pad on, the IP phone automatically dials out and turns the hands-free mode on as soon as a dial pad key or soft key is pressed. Now let's go into the set audio menu. I'll go into audio mode first. This menu allows you to configure how the hands free key works. There are four options. If you select the first option, speaker, when you press the hands free key, the calls will toggle between the handset and the speakerphone. If you select headset, when you press the hands free key, Calls will toggle between the handset and the headset. If you select speaker slash headset, all incoming calls will be sent to the speakerphone. And when you press the hands free key, calls can be toggled between the speakerphone, the handset, and the headset. And if you choose the last option, headset slash speaker, all incoming calls will be sent to the headset. And when you press the hands free key, calls will toggle between the headset, the speakerphone, and the handset. Once I've made my selection, I'll press the Done key. I'll arrow down and go into the next menu, Headset Mic Volume. Here I can set the mic volume for my headset. The default setting is Medium. I'll hit the Done Soft key twice to return to the Preferences menu. The next menu is Time and Date. There are a variety of menus to set up the date and time format. 
However, your telephone system should automatically take care of this for you and no modifications in this menu should be necessary. The AstraSIP terminals have multilingual support. The base phones can support English, French, Spanish, German, Italian, and Portuguese. And the cordless telephones can support English, French, and Spanish. All languages may not be available for selection. However, Astra offers additional language packs that can be loaded. Now I'll return back to the main menu in the options list. As I continue down the list, you'll see phone status. Under this menu, you can check things like the IP address your SIP phone's been assigned and the firmware the phone's using. Under the user password, you can change the password of the phone. The password characters must be numeric and the factory default password is blank or no password. You'll need a password to lock or unlock your phone. I'll talk about locking and unlocking your phone in just a minute. The next menu is the administrator menu. To access this menu, you must enter the administrator password. The next option in the list is restart phone. If you select this option, you'll be prompted to confirm that you want to restart the phone. And if you do, the phone will reboot. The last option is phone lock. A user or administrator can lock a phone to prevent it from being used or configured. Once the phone is locked, the user or administrator can enter their password to unlock the phone. And as a side note, the phone can also be locked via the web user interface. And one last thing. Anytime you're in the options menu and you want to exit out, you can press the goodbye key. This will exit you out of wherever you're at in the options menu quickly and return your screen back to its normal display. Next, I'll answer a call using the hands-free mode. Then I'll mute that call and then I'll place the call on hold. When you have an incoming call, by leaving the handset on hook and pressing the line that's flashing, on my phone, this activates the hands-free speaker mode. Notice the red light lights up on the hands-free key. Now let me press the mute key. You'll know that the mute feature's been activated when the mute key light is flashing red and the icon on the LCD screen changes to a microphone with a line through it. Pressing the mute key again, unmutes the call. Now I'll place this call on hold. When I press the hold key, the line key LED and the ringer LED both flash and the icon on the LCD screen changes. Pressing the hold key a second time will remove the call from hold and connect you back to your caller. Now I'll demonstrate how to transfer a call. The first thing that I'll need to do is to answer this incoming call. After I answer it, I find out they need to be transferred to another extension. On my system, on the left side of my phone, there are three soft keys labeled Drop, Conference, and Transfer. The Drop soft key is the same as hanging up or pressing the Goodbye key. I'll demonstrate the Conference feature in just a minute. When I press the Transfer soft key, I have two choices. I can perform an unsupervised transfer, I can dial the number and then hang up and the call is automatically transferred to that extension. Or I can perform a supervised transfer. This is where I dial the number, I wait for that person to answer and I give my heads up on who's calling. Then I hang up. As soon as I press the drop soft key or the goodbye key, the call will be connected to the person I'm transferring the call to. Now I'll demonstrate how to establish a three-way conference call. The first step is to dial the first party. Once they've answered, I'll press the conference soft key. This will put them into a hold state. Then I'll dial the second party. As soon as the second party answers, I'll press the conference button again. This will establish my three-way conference call. Notice that both parties are displayed on my LCD screen, Party 1 and Party 2. Using the arrow keys, I can select one of the parties. Then if I press the drop button, that will disconnect them from the three-way conference. At this point, I can continue my conversation. I can establish another three-way conference call. Or when I'm finished, I can hang up and disconnect the call. 
The next soft key I'll cover is the callers list. The callers list stores information for up to 200 of the last received calls. When you press the callers list soft key, you'll see a summary page. It will display the number of current calls stored on your phone and the number of new calls. Use the up and down arrow keys to cycle or toggle through the current list of calls. As you display each call, they have several options. You can dial the number. You can edit the number, then dial it. You can look at the details, which will tell you the length of the call and what line it came in on. You can delete the call from your displayed list. Or you can quit and exit out. If you were cycling through your callers list and then press the quit button, you can press the resume soft key to display the last call you were reviewing. You can sort the calls, and if you press the delete list, it will delete all of the calls in your callers list. But before it deletes the entire call list, you'll be asked to confirm this action. At any time, you can press quit to exit out of this menu. And don't forget, the goodbye key can always be used to exit out of a menu. Speed dial numbers can be programmed through the options menu, and some call control systems, or PBXs, have a web user interface that you can use to program speed dial numbers. The next soft key is Call Forward. I could have also accessed this feature through the Options menu. When I press the Call Forward soft key, I'm given three choices. I can forward all calls, I can forward calls when I'm busy or on the phone, or I can forward calls when I don't answer within a certain number of rings. Currently, forwarding all calls is highlighted. I would use the up and down arrow keys to select one of the other two options. At the bottom of the screen, I have choices about how I want to handle forward all calls. First, I'm going to change my configuration. The state refers to turning the call forward feature on or off. Remember you have call forward all, call forward busy, and call forward no answer. Then arrow down and enter the number you want the calls to be forwarded to. When you're finished entering the number, Press the Done soft key. On the LCD screen, you can now see that there's a check mark next to the All option. Once I've entered in the phone number for Call Forward All, the next two buttons allow me quick access, once I've set up Call Forward All, to turn the feature on or turn the feature off. Also notice the Call Forward and Ringer LEDs are both on. I'll press the All Off soft key to return my phone to a normal condition. As soon as I press the Done soft key, the LEDs will go out and also return to a normal condition. On the right side of the screen, I have the Copy All. This will allow me to copy the phone number to the other Call Forward options. I can press Cancel, and I'll press the Done soft key when I'm finished. D&D, &D, or Do Not Disturb, is a feature on the phone that when activated, prevents the phone from ringing or receiving incoming calls. When you press the D&D &D soft key, its LED and the ringer LED both light up, and the D&D &D status is displayed on the LCD screen. When a user calls a number that has D&D &D enabled, the user will receive a busy signal or a message, depending upon how the administrator has set up the account. When D&D &D is set up with call forward, all incoming calls can be sent to voicemail or to another number. Pressing the D&D soft key a second time will deactivate the Do Not Disturb feature. XML is a language much like HTML. All AstroSIP phones have an XML browser. The XML application for the IP phones allow users to create custom services they can use via the phone's navigation keys, dial pad, and LCD display. These services include things like weather, traffic reports, contact information, and stock quotes. XML also allows users to build custom applications, such as inventory and order status. One hotel even built a custom application to provide room status with their maid service, so that when the maid service was complete, the maid would press an XML button on the phone, indicating that the maid service was complete and the room was ready for the next guest. This way the front desk had real-time information knowing when the room was ready. There is more information about XML and an XML development toolkit available on the Astro website. In this lesson, we explored the menu options 
and I demonstrated how to navigate through the different menus using the up and down and left and right arrow keys along with the select and done soft keys. I also demonstrated a variety of features. Some features may vary based upon the way your PBX is set up. For additional information and a complete list of the features and procedures on how to use them, go to www.astra.com. This concludes this lesson on the AstraSIP terminals, user training and features.